Hey guys, Sam here. Uh, today's video is going to be the first in a series of videos having to do with long range or precision rifle load development. This first one is going to cover working with new brass. Okay, I'm a results driven guy, so the uh, first thing I like to do is just kind of identify what I want to get out of any project and then set my process up and set all the steps up to achieve that. So this rifle is a, a new rifle I just built. It's a 260 Remington. I built this for shooting PRS matches. So what I want out of this gun and what I want out of my load development is to come up with a load that consistently gives me five shots into half an inch or better at 100 yards. And at the same time, I want to be sure to keep my extreme spread over 10 shots under 20 feet per second. That's plenty. That's all you need for shooting PRS type matches. So uh, that's what I want to get out of this. I'm not going to... Uh, waste barrel or components or time trying to whittle down a uh, 0.5 group down to 0.4 or 0.4 down to 0.3. I'm going to get there as fast as I can to that half inch or better and low ES and then I'm just going to start shooting it. So uh, the process I'll take you through is what I've done before that gets me exactly into that uh, level of performance or better with my long range hunting rig. So uh, let's just get started. Uh, for this project, I'm going to start out with 300 pieces of Lapua brass, new pieces. I like to start out with new brass for every barrel that I have, so uh, you can get by with using once or twice fired. As long as you can get them in the new chamber after going through your sizing die, you should be able to use it all right. But uh, most of the time, I'm going to wear brass out in the barrel I'm shooting it in, so uh, it's an expendable component to me. So I get brand new brass for every barrel that I do. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at it all. I'm going to do it a hundred at a time. I just put it in these bins and I just visually inspect them to make sure that there aren't, uh, you know, cracked necks or big dents in the shoulders or anything like that or misdrilled primer holes or anyway, this is Lapua brass. So this is a very short part of the process. It's really good brass coming right out of the box. Now I'm not going to weigh this brass and I'll tell you why. I think it's a big waste of time to weigh Lapua brass. Uh, I have weighed brass before and I've sorted it by weight in some of my other guns. And I will tell you that if you're going to weigh your brass and sort it, you need to follow the right procedure doing so. Uh, the whole reason, the whole premise behind weighing your brass is you're looking for a perfectly consistent case volume inside this piece of brass. So the only way to make sure that you're weeding out the ones that have less volume is to go through an entire firing process that includes firing the case to the dimension to fit the chamber and then trimming off the neck you know for any kind of brass flow to make the case longer and making sure that your outside dimension of that case is perfectly uniform across every single piece of case you're sorting once you get that outside dimension all the same all the way across your batch of brass then you can weigh each one and go through a process of what you're going to allow as far as uh, deviations in the weight. So typically speaking, when I've uh, sorted brass by weight, I always sort them within 1%. So if, uh, you know, if all of your brass falls within 1% of each other in weight, I don't worry about it. You will see some outliers. What will generally happen like with a batch of, oh, 200 pieces of Winchester 300 Win Mag brass. Uh, what I saw on a couple of batches of that that I did was I'd lose maybe eight to ten pieces uh, in 200 pieces where they just fall outside that one percent weight range and that's after firing every one of them uh, making sure that the the cases are trimmed exactly the same length so you take off that little piece of brass on the end of the neck uh, all those things add up you really need to have that outside of the case exactly the same before you start weighing them so you can see it's a it's a you know it's a pretty big investment in time and uh, you're, you know, you're shooting bullets, you're shooting powder, and you're wasting barrel life while you're making every one of those pieces the same exact outside dimension. So, uh, you know, if you want to do it, go for it. But with Lapua brass, I think it's a big waste of time for what I want to do. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is collect a little bit of data on my brass before I start uh, any of the process so that I have some you know, raw figures as far as dimensions and weight, if you want to weight sort them, and things like that on hand before I change the brass at all. So what I usually do is I just go through and I measure all the dimensions that we're going to change or that we need to know when we size this case or when we see the bullet. So I'll measure the, 
the overall length of the case. I'll measure the, the shoulder length, so from the datum to the, the case head, which is the dimension that we're going to change when we start bumping these back. I'm going to measure the diameter of the web here, the outside diameter, as well as right behind the shoulder down here at the bottom. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at my case outside diameter. And more than likely with a Lapua case, I'm going to punch that out, but I'll show you that later. So with all these numbers on hand, it makes it easy for me to look at different 260 chambers and see uh, the differences in how they're cut. You know, what's my headspace look like? Is it a... Is it a tighter chamber than the last one I shot? Things like that. It just gives me a, a baseline so that when I shoot this, you know, when I take this brand new case that I measured and then shoot it to fill the chamber, I'll be able to see how much the case grew in every one of those dimensions and see if it, uh, you know, see how close it is to other barrels I've had. And it'll give me an idea of maybe what my charge weight should be or how it's going to shoot or how long the brass is going to last or you know any of those other things plus it gives me some hard figures to send back to you guys when you email me about things so a lot of this is about curiosity I suppose but it's real easy to do you just put it in your load book and it's there forever you know exactly where you started okay I do these a hundred at a time and I've already figured out that I'm going to have to expand these necks they they come in pretty tight on the PUA I'm getting about a 291 neck on this and what I want is a 292 or 293. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run every one of these over a mandrel that will expand them out so that I have a 293 neck on all of them. Which basically gives me a 263 inside diameter. So one thousandth uh, less than bullet diameter. So it will give me just enough uh, tension on the bullet that it's going to be pretty close to what I'm going to run when all these cases are fired and I run them through my bushing dies. So let's run over to the press real quick and start expanding some necks. Okay, this is a Sinclair expander die. And uh, all it does is it holds a mandrel inside that will let you punch out a case neck to a, a diameter that you want it to be. So this one pushes these necks out to about 263 thousandths. And that gives me the one thousandths bullet grip that I want. So that's all it looks like. It's just a, you know, a chunk of steel. You can see it's pretty rough. Uh, from running brass over it. Real easy to set up. Just screw down, put her in the press. And I take some of this Imperial dry lube, dip the case in, run it over the mandrel. You can feel it after it goes across and it's into the case body and pull her back down. So let's take a look at the diameter. It's like 293. So that's exactly where I want to start. Now if you don't have one of these or you don't want to buy one of these, you can just use a regular full length die as long as you still have the expander and run the expander over the neck. Just be sure you don't jam the case all the way up into it. Uh, you can if you want, but there's absolutely no need to full length body size a piece of Lapua brass or uh, bump the shoulder or do anything at all dimensionally to it unless you want to change the diameter of the neck. It just doesn't get you anywhere. This case is already uh, way smaller than uh, a Sammy spec chamber or even a match chamber is. It, uh, looking at mine, it looks like it's probably going to stretch at least 10 thousandths when I fire them. So. There's absolutely no reason to run this through a full length sizing die unless you want to use the expander to punch the neck out to the right diameter. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do with a piece of new brass before I load them up and fire them is I'm going to uh, bevel and chamfer these necks because they're going to be a little bit rough and there's no need to uh, push a new bullet through all that junk. Because I'm going to start my load development right off these new pieces of brass. I'm not going to wait for them all to be fired. Uh, you know, I'm going to get some pretty good accuracy out of my first loads with the new brass. So I want to make sure that I'm not forcing a bullet past a lip or anything like that. You know, you run this over the mandrel, you'd think it all roll out and be nice, but you'll still end up with a little bit of junk there that's rough. So I just put my my standard edge on it with this VLD uh, chamfer tool and then I cut the outside too just cuz 
and I end up with a really nice neck ready to rock on my new brass. Okay, then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to prime them just like I would with any other piece of brass. I don't worry about cleaning off any of that graphite. There isn't very much on there anyway. It's not going to make any difference in how my loads perform. I've tried it. I've tried cleaning the necks and it made absolutely no difference. So I stopped doing it. I just uh, run them how they are. So these all have primers in there and I set them in this block and a lot of guys ask me what these are. These are the Sinclair loading blocks. They're made out of some kind of poly and they rock. They're awesome little blocks. If you get them dirty, like if you spray lube or, or whatever on these cases, you can literally throw them in the dishwasher when you're done and clean them up. Anyway, I've had these for a lot of years and I really like them. So these are Sinclair loading blocks. Okay, one of the things guys always ask me is if, uh, if I turn necks on cases on these precision rifles. And as a rule, I don't. I've tried it a couple of times on rifles that were already shooting very well, so they had a high level of precision, the barrels were really good barrels, and I had really good loads developed for them, and I had, uh, you know, by their standards, pretty crappy brass. So what I did was I, I went and uh, turned all my brass down, and the runout was big in them. I mean, I was using stuff like uh, Winchester 7WSM brass, uh, Remington RUM brass and a 338 edge, as well as Remington 260 brass. So, you know, none of it was very good brass. My 300 wind mag that I'm shooting now uh, has, meh, kind of bad uh, neck thickness run out in it probably. Uh, in fact, I have 40 pieces of perfectly turned brass to run an experiment on it, and I haven't touched it in two years. So, you know, the gun's just shooting that well. It has ES under 10 feet per second and shoots almost into a quarter of a minute. So, I don't see any room to improve on that. But if you want to turn decks, I suggest that you first sort them to make sure that it's not a big waste of time because quite frankly, if you have one to two thousandths of run out in a, in a case neck, you know, it's not gonna affect very much. Even with a bushing die, even if you want low ES, you're gonna find uh, that it's not going to give you very many returns or very much of a high level of return on all the work and all the investment and tools and all that. Now a lot of guys turn next just so that everything is exactly the same and I respect that. I think consistency is a big deal in this sport and in this in what we do here. Having said that, I demand results. So once I see something doesn't give me the results that uh, are measurable that I want to see, then I don't see any reason to do it anymore. If you want to sort your case decks to see what you're working with at least in a batch of brass, then I've, uh, I've had a lot of good luck with this Sinclair tool again from Sinclair. And all it is is a stand that holds a uh, pilot that you put the case neck onto and then a dial indicator comes down and measures the run out as you run this piece of brass over that pilot. And to get the right dimension you run it over a mandrel first obviously, but make sure everything's clean and everything's lubed up and it works really well. I'll give you a real quick demo here. I'll put the camera right on it and show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is the, the case sorting tool, they call it, in action. And basically all you're doing is running this case over a pilot. So there's the pilot, and then it has a, a tit here that sticks out and goes through the flash hole to hold everything in place. You just run the piece of brass. Now this piece of brass went over the mandrel over there on the press, so everything Every imperfection in the brass now is pushed to the outside of this where the dial indicator can get a look at it. So I'm just going to run it over that and go as slow as you can so that you don't jump it all over the place. Sometimes it, it uh, doesn't show some of them if you go too fast, but just go nice and slow and smooth. And they give you an idea of what the run out is. So if I saw a bunch of cases that were five or six thousands of run out, then you know I might have second thoughts about even using that lot of brass because you know you're gonna have thickness variation it's not just in the neck it's all the way in this body here so you're gonna have a case that isn't very uniform in thickness so uh, you know all things considered you probably wouldn't even want to mess with that brass but typically speaking most of the brass I work with even the Remington and the Winchester stuff uh, three to four thousandths is about as bad as it gets in that variation and like I was saying before I've turned those I've played with them in guns that already shot very well without them being neck turned and saw no improvement so 
you know, that tells me that there are other things that are more important to uh, the ultimate precision of a rifle than case neck turning. So uh, anyway, if you want to try it, I would recommend that you check them first and make sure it's not a complete waste of time because you don't really need to take, you know, any brass off that that you don't need to unless it's a uh, chamber that you have to turn necks in. All right, well, that's all I do with new brass. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. If you know anybody that needs help getting started with their load development, make sure to share this video with them. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and go over and check out penhoundprecision.com. There's a ton of reloading info there. There's a lot of hot links to all the tools that I use and the gear and stuff like that. The next video and load development is going to cover coming up with a starting point for a bullet seating depth. Uh, we're going to use a modified case that I fired in the chamber and I'll show you how I build those. Uh, the other thing we're going to probably talk about is coming up with a powder charge starting point. Uh, until then, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.